then leads into the fifth step of this program, which is really the daily, weekly action, the, the immediate results pages. And these pages can be broken down where you can use a page for an entire week, uh, a couple days, or each and every day can have um, a one page dedicated to it. So again, there's a lot of flexibility in this program depending on what your lifestyle is like. Um, and what it, you put in the date, mine I use it daily, and I put in what things need to be accomplished. And I regularly look back at that uh, step four and step two and, and step one for the things that I need to do each and every day. And sometimes I might have an appointment, so I write down that time of that appointment in the time commitment. Um, a lot of times, though, I look at the item and I say, okay, well, how long would this take me to do this? 30 minutes, two hours, and I put a, a chunk of time that I can dedicate to that. I might just write two hours, three hours, and figure it out uh, when I get a chunk of time, and I kind of compartmentalize it. And I also then put, what's the top priority today? What are my top, top priorities? Because I can get distracted, and sometimes we procrastinate on things that really aren't as important as other things, and maybe that big report or a lot of paperwork is where I procrastinate. So I have a tendency to all of a sudden run out of hours in the day and still can't do all that paperwork because I've been doing the, the other things I like better that maybe weren't as a big a priority. So this helps me and everyone keep on track with what's really important to get done today. And what I like about the time commitment issue too it, if you're, most people when they have a day planner with, you know, the times are set up 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. already designated in that time planner. Well, I have this very unrealistic vision of what I can accomplish in an hour when I look at systems like that. And I say, well, I need to get this done today, so I'll do that between 8.30 and 9.30. And I squeeze it in. And 9.30 hits, and I'm still working on it, and I haven't finished, and I'm nowhere near it. When I look at it in this format, I see, well, how long would that task realistically take? I may say three hours. Well, then I have a lot more flexibility to do that, and I like that about this. One thing I think is really funny, and I think most people will find themselves in this situation, is after about a month, month and a half of, of using this system, I thought, well, I'm going to see how many hours I actually schedule of work <laughs> in a day. <laughs> and I looked, you want to know that. <laughs> I looked back and I thought, well, no wonder I'm, you know, feeling behind before I put the system together because I was trying to fit, I literally every day schedule about 22 to 30 hours of work for myself <laughs> a day, you know. So, boy, is it a big celebration when I get everything checked off. <laughs> but I just started to laugh at myself because I know so many other people do this and how real, unrealistic were my expectations. And no wonder I was feeling bad about what I was accomplishing. And this helps me manage my time more, feel better about the time I use, and kind of let go about the stress. You know, it's like, okay, well, there's always tomorrow. I can get it done. Um, and then I reprioritize those tasks for, for tomorrow's top priority <laughs> items. So, um, you know, and moms always do uh, so much more. So uh, that's something that we need to realistically look at. And then on the second page of the daytime uh, area is what did I accomplish today? And the first question is, as you can see, was what is the happiest moment of my day? And sometimes, you know, some days are really not so great. And it's always a nice reflection to say, well, there was one happy moment today. It, it might be that, you know, during that major, uh, business call, you know, the, the 
uh, sales call of the century for your business, your child decided to climb up the dresser and fall down and had to go to the hospital, well, the happiest moment of your day might be that he didn't need stitches and there was no concussion. So that kind of <laughs> stuff works, too, you know. <laughs> On some days, that's really good stuff. Um, and, the, and then it goes to what am I most proud of that I achieved today? You know, on a, on a day like that, it might be that I kept my cool, you know, and didn't scream over the phone or something like that. Um, and Or it, it can be that you made that call that you've been avoiding or, or fearful of. And So there are a lot of little things and big things that we can be happy about or proud of during the day that we don't give ourselves credit for and, <laughs> and we don't give ourselves a pat on the back for. And then we have the uh, – Moms in Business logo that represents uh, balance, growth, wisdom, and enrichment. And this kind of is a reflection on how did I manage my time to maybe do something that adds to those parts of my life. And this kind of keeps you in check uh, that if you're keeping a balanced life or not. And, Brenda, you have a great um, concept on this circle on how to reflect back. Would you let everybody know about uh, keeping track and reflecting on that? Sure. You know, it's, um, as Gina mentioned, you know, referring back to your original categories that you listed underneath the, the areas to help you place items in those different um, growth, balance, wisdom, and enrichment. But sometimes at the end of the day, when I am looking at it, if you just, you know how like when you when you take a stack of $100 million dollar bills and you flip through them, <laughs> I'll use that little picture, but when you, even when you take the, uh, all the pages and you just flip very quickly through them, looking at those circles as the pages flip, 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 sometimes I've noticed that there might be one area that at the end of the day I haven't written anything down. So I go, wow, boy, looks like for about six days there, enrichment never got anything. <laughs> so I know that that's one area of my life that I might not be focusing on as much and that I need to go back to. What does that mean for me? What is the value of enrichment in my life that I determined at the beginning, and why am I not including it? So maybe I either didn't put down the right component and or maybe I'm not having that happen in my life, and I... I don't want that. I want my life to be enriched. So it's a nice little reminder and a good quick review of making sure that you are addressing all those different areas. Absolutely. And it's important to the sense of balance and well-being and mm. less stress. It's a really key. All of these components are really key in uh, having an, a result of reduced stress in your life. 